Oh, fucking hell, fire. That is right, welcome back to the shop. And this was actually another viewer's question, which is awesome. I love the viewer's questions, they're cool. Uh, he was watching the um, Santa Pod video when I went to go see the Canon guys with their um, supercharged top fuel V twin. And he asked me a question. He said, The guy, when you're talking to the guys, and one of the guys explains that the uh, rear cylinder does not fill. Um, completely or I can't remember what he said, exactly what he said but it's something like that the rear cylinder doesn't fill completely um, uh, compared to the front cylinder there's more power coming out of the front cylinder than there is the rear cylinder how come he said what's going on I don't understand that's because um, which is a good question I'm diving straight into the explanation um, that's a good question generally and I said this to him but it's just for the benefit of all of you um, generally V twins what you'll do is you'll have um, some kind of intake or whatever and then you'll have your uh, intakes like this so air comes in it goes through your head and you fill your cylinders evenly now the timing on shared crank pins um, cylinders is obviously 90 degrees out of phase because it's a 90 degree v-twin uh, if it's a 60 degree twin v-twin if it's a 60 degree or 90 degree or whatever that means that if it's a shared crank pin, it means each cylinder is out of phase. It's not that, so that wasn't the actual problem. The problem was, was the supercharger was down here. <coughs> you have the outlet for the supercharger like this. And then you have the other outlet or the intake part, should I say, like that. It's a really bad drawing. But basically what happens was, is that this, the supercharger is constantly churning away which means it is constantly drawing air in and it's constantly trying to pack air into that manifold right and what happens is is because this is a longer distance a weird phenomenon happens which is basically just this is pressure waves pressure waves can only go at the speed of light at uh, speed of light speed of sound fucking hell fire <laughs> so what happens is is the valve on this cylinder opens so it opens and the air starts to expand. Um, where the fuck is that slinky gone? Oh, bastard. Slinky. Where the fuck is it? Was it a minute ago? I said a minute ago. Last week. <laughs> I don't fucking know, there's so much shit in here, I can't even fucking see what I'm doing. I can't remember what I did with it. Anyway, any road. Um, so what happens is, is if you think, imagine I've got a, a magical slinky. When you pull it, um, you've got both ends, and as you pull, it starts to lead away first, and then everything starts to follow it as you go along. I can't believe I fucking lost it, it'd be so much easier with it. Thank you. Nope. Edit this shit out. Picked up, moved it, I'm sure I did. Oh, oh, there it is. Fucking hell, there it is. I knew I'd fucking picked it up. I put it in there for safekeeping. <laughs> so, you imagine that this is your port here. And what happens is, is the air starts to fall in. It's so fucking hard to do. The air starts to fall into it and the rest of it starts to follow. Yeah? One has to go before the other. They all can't just move as one. And this is what we call, in a sense, port communication. The valve opens, then this air, 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 this air, this air, this air, this air, this air, starts to move. And then more air can cram in behind it and you get a flow through. Because as soon as this valve closes, it stops, 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 and then pressure builds up. It all starts to get squashed. In a sense, that's the basic way of thinking about it. Now, because this supercharger is here, and because there's a cylinder here, and then there's a cylinder here, and because these distances are quite great, it takes longer for this port to open. 
Uh, it doesn't. The, the valve opens and it takes longer to communicate down all the way to the supercharger that this is the way that the air is flowing now. So this cylinder basically it opens and then it starts to move, 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 closes and then it's move, 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 but then the closing's following it. Whereas in with this cylinder, it opens, it opens, 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 everything starts flowing, then it closes, then it closes, 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 closes. Because this is asymmetrical, because it's not symmetrical between the ports, there is a different runner length between here and here. In a sense, what happens in your, um, what happens in uh, cars with the variable, um, port track lengths and all the rest of it, and variable uh, inlet tracks for certain race engines and all the rest of it, is that you have a certain length because of this, basically this pressure pulsing, this is what in a sense pressure pulsing is all about, it's the communication, we'll do more of it when I go around it, about it particularly, but we're just talking about this, but because um, there is a different length, there's this length here and then there's this a hell of a lot longer length to this rear cylinder, now you think to yourself, well there's this uh, there's resonances, so basically there are cylinder, there's lengths that suit each cylinder. That's got nothing to do with this, they are running out of room. They've got a massive fucking engine in here, they put the supercharger where they can fit it, you know, and then that's it, and then they just have to basically connect them up. They couldn't put it anywhere else because they have to think about drive belts and sitting on the bloody thing and if things explode and all the rest of it. So, and that is the problem with drag racing, is that they are not building these things to the ideal um, engineering versions of what they should do they are basically just cramming as much as they can in and there's a lot of things that they have to you know give and take on and all the rest of it the fact of the matter is is this engine produces far too much power anyway they detune the shit out of it you know they basically back it down just so they can get traction anyway they just understand that the rear cylinder takes a lot more less beating than the front cylinder you know it's just the way it is um and because these are uh, 45 degrees or, because uh, sorry, 90 degrees or 60 degrees apart, I can't remember what it was, I'm sure it's a 90 degrees V-twin, I can't remember. Um, but uh, this, you can then get uh, basically a port scavenging and um, port stealing and all the rest of it, um, when basically two ports trying to draw at the same time and one has basically got more flow and blah blah blah. We'll go into all that in the future because that's really quite important when you get to um, airbox designs and manifold designs and four cylinders and stuff like that, V4s as well, especially. But basically it's just the runner length and, and, and like I say that's down to the architecture of the bike and uh, just how far away it is from the cylinder. The cylinder opens and by the time the supercharger does the cylinder opens it's already fucking closed. Now it, this knowing thing, the supercharger doesn't direct air there. I'm going to have to come up with a proper, you know, I'll basically sort something out so we can use a slinky like this and show the difference between the two as in pulsing or something like that you know i'll try and show you something like this anyway i hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit